Uh, welcome to session 3 of Aerospace and Aerodynamic Training course for ANSYS Bloom Trained. So in this session we are going to discuss about dynamic stability derivatives and how we can obtain and calculate them via CFD. So to do that uh, we should mention our outline that we are going to discuss in this session. So as our outline, we are going to discuss about the appliances of a CFD in the flight dynamics and then we are going to mention about the uh, derivatives that we are going to calculate them in this course and how we can relate it to them to the aerodynamic phenomena and how they affect on how they affect this uh, on our airplanes. So shall let's go and start the course. The first question that we are going to face in this course is we should answer what aerodynamics are used for and uh, what's the safety appliances on this calculation stuff. Uh, so first we need to know that we can use uh, range computations uh, via CFD uh, and for example we can use these range computations to obtain our engagement of target and miss distance uh, for example we have these two criteria in the missile design and uh, for the aircraft and UAVs and staff we can calculate the maneuverability and stability estimates um, by having these three elements we can analyze any trajectory that we have based on their dynamic equations and the derivatives for stability and dynamic stability dynamic and static stability derivatives so for the uh, for the range and endurance computation we have uh, our equations based on their engine type for example we have a piston propeller and we have a uh, true budget true budget engines so both and uh, both the range and endurance of the aircraft based on the fuel rate uh, rate consumption of the engine so therefore the type of the engine that is involved and output measured of terms of thrust or in terms of power for piston propellers and we generally consider the range to be a distance that aircraft can fly from a given speed and altitude until it runs out of fuel and endurance as the time it takes to run out of the fuel as one might accept uh, there's, a f uh, there's a flat condition that will give us the best range for a given aircraft uh, and a different flat condition that will give us the maximum endurance. Uh, as you see from the equations, this uh, involves based on the relations for aerodynamic conditions uh, as a total airworthy as a CL to CD and the difference between the wait in the beginning of the process and aim and the end of that mission profile process so as you see here of interest of two giving measures here we have it uh, as the engine efficiency and we have a c constant as a uh, engine fuel consumptions so the other way they will be the aerodynamic derivatives that we have learned from the pre uh, previous sessions how to calculate and obtain them and the rest will be the aircraft uh, physical items as the weight in the beginning of the cruise profile for example we want to if we want to uh, compute it uh, we have the weight as a w0 in the beginning of the cruise and we have a w1 as a weight at the end of the cruise mission profile so these two options are related to mostly related to engine fuel consumptions and the aerodynamic coefficient as you see in the boxes that they have a different relations with the engine type and the aerodynamic derivatives uh, for example the endurance for the piston proper aircraft depends pretty much to the altitude it flies but we don't have something like that for the turbojet engine uh, but uh, the dependency to the altitude are, is, is visible clearly in the Trubridget range equations. To describe our aircraft, missile or any aerial vehicle as general uh, and analyze them as uh, their maneuverability and stability, uh, we 
consider the system based on certain parameters and derivatives. These derivatives are describing us how our vehicle will react on that specific mode that we are going to uh, use to uh, analyze. Uh, for example, we can uh, divide these two five uh, divide the, these two parameters to five different columns as we are on to discuss we have a longitude stability elements we have a side slip elements and we have side slip rates and we have roll rate and yaw rate so for longitude uh, stability we have a derivatives called longitude uh, stability derivatives and as you see these derivatives are based on their dimension uh, dimension less and they call a uh, american standard four uh, we have a CMCT and CMCT for CDU. Uh, these uh, are describing the aircraft moment along its pitch axis and the moment that creates by the engine's installation place. We have a derivative that's called uh, that shows us how our drag force changes along the its velocity axis by the difference of the velocity itself uh, we have a CLU it shows us how our how much our lift force will different based on the speed it flies we have CMU shows the moment difference we have CMTU uh, this is uh, one of the important ones uh, as you see here we have the uh, derivatives and it shows us how our moment coefficient will change based on the speed that we are flying into and the thrust our engines are producing and we have them as you see here uh, for example we have a side slip on the second column on the second column we have c by beta and seal beta and cmt beta and cy and uh, these are same like like same uh, as the length to the steps but in a different axis for body and velocity uh, keep sure that these uh, derivatives are modeled on velocity axis as you see at their index we have a pq lr and uh, these are for the velocity axis not the body axis itself so uh, then we have the rates of these derivatives as a side slip rates and again we have a roll rate and roll rate the roll rate and yaw rate are very important to analyze because these stabilities can affect on the couple dynamic stability modes called uh, dutch roll we have a spiral and uh, one of the important one is the dutch roll and the spiral uh, so it's very important to have a aircraft stable in dutch roll and spiral in every flight condition so we have to divide these six derivatives and estimate them individually so some of these are based on totally on the aircraft dynamic system uh, but three of them can be individually calculated directly from CFD method itself uh, the main idea is to we divide our aircraft or missile or any aerial system into a oscillation and we uh, output the moment change in every time step and we plot them so let's discuss more so the three different derivatives that we are going to use is called CLP CMQ and CNR uh, these two are based on the moment that we have observed and observing our velocity frame axis so the, one of them is uh, called roll rate, yaw rate, and pitch rate. So we are uh, we have these uh, elements directly monitored on the axis itself, and these are completely related to the oscillation we have on the body and the moment that generates due that oscillation and the change rapid change on the angle of attack. So first we need to define uh, our three different angles. Uh, these angles are the, between the origin axis and the body orientation at the given time. So the first for uh, angle between the reference x vector and our body, v, uh, body x vector. Uh, 
uh, these are with respect to body uh, these uh, angles uh, we have a theta for the x1 uh, as a pitch angle uh, we have a phi angle for the difference between y axis and the body y axis and uh, we have a psi angle for the difference between z angle of the body and the origin frame so after defining these three angles uh, we can have some maneuverability constants called your yaw pitch and roll so now if we don't change our angle of attack but uh, just rotate along the axis itself we have these three new parameters called yaw roll and pitch the pitch will be based on the rotation uh, along the y axis z-axis and the yaw will be rotation around the yaw uh, y axis and the roll will be rotation along the x-axis itself so here uh, we have uh, obtained our defining dynamic stability parameters and understand them based on the mo motion on the aircraft body itself so for the CLP derivative, the GP index shows for the roll, uh, indicates for the roll rate. So the variable P is called the roll and rate of rotation and derivatives of P are called derivatives of the rate of rotation and called basically a roll rate. Uh, when the aircraft uh, begins to rotate uh, along its x-axis with the angular velocity of P, uh, such a movement uh, affects the airflow and local angle of attack in all the section of the wing and the tail itself and it's changed the distribution of the lift coefficient in, along its axis so by giving an oscillation uh, we see that change of the CLP and it returns us uh, the sensitivity of our aircraft to rotation and with respect to its lift force change uh, in the given time. So for the CMQ derivatives, the Q indicates for uh, pitch rate related to derivative, and the Q hill uh, here is called a uh, pitch rate and the derivatives of the expressed uh, and these derivatives expresses the aerodynamic effect of the uh, pitching of the aircraft along its axis in the condition that we have a zero angle of attack uh, for better understanding of this uh, consider you have a first uh, at first uh, you have uh, air aircraft is recovering from a dive and you need to see it will be stable to stable to exit the diving mode safely and reaching a stable state and how the moment and the lift force will change along this maneuver will be so to do that we have this derivative called uh, cdq clq and cmq in this basket of this derivatives and uh, the most important one is a cmq and clq uh, this courses we are going to for example example the CMQ and same as this you can calculate the CLQ as well too and last but not least we have the CNR derivative the CNR derivative shows the relation uh, of the aircraft positioning and moment change based on the yaw angle and here the R indicates that we have this Derivative related to its yaw positioning and have its own effect on the aircraft. So it basically shows how our parameters are changing when we have a stable and constant yaw angle and we have oscillation along that axis. So basically, when we have a aircraft, when we have aircraft and it loses one angle, for example. The great uh, torque will be generated and tries to unstable the aircraft. If you have this uh, uh, derivative uh, as quite big as we want, uh, basically it will be a negative value. 
uh, we can uh, counter that torque generated by the engine and we re uh, restable the aircraft by itself uh, so for this reason it's very important to obtain CNR and actually it shows the effect of how our tail is taking part to our uh, take part in our dynamic stability uh, this value will be important for the aircraft which we they have uh, the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer uh, because it's a coupled mode but mostly we have uh, vertical stabilizer uh, but if we have for example V-tail in the aircraft it would be very important because it's coupled, coupled with the elevator itself so the rudder and CNR as you can see there's a similarity between them are very important in our side force stability for the missiles which we have uh, no tail but we have fins their, their number in the CNR and the CNQ would be quite the same because these are working as two similar constant as we have a rotation one body without having any fins or we can have uh, without having any uh, stabilizer so for the missiles it could be simplified to the same uh, for these two but in the aircraft we have this derivative uh, to be calculated and it's one of the important ones so the idea uh, behind this course and behind this session is how to obtain them so it would be a very simple trick but it would be very useful so for example we have a forced oscillation on our aerial vehicle's body uh, based on its condition for example uh, its missile or aircraft would be different as you mentioned so we give that uh, uh, we give it a forced oscillation and we analyze the change of the momentum along the each axis by the time passing and then we give it a oscillation with a different omega speed its angular speed and again we calculate the distribution of the moment along its axis then we have the third case as we want to see uh, the two will be generally enough but if you want to calculate the more coefficients uh, you need to have the three in total so the three oscillation with different speeds but in the constant time should be monitored and then after that we are obtaining the results and changing them to format of Uh, angular change and the angular itself so basically by having a regression linear regression we would have a line that fitted into our data so that equation will return us our desired derivatives on the so on the axis that we have selected and monitored To benefit from Mr. CFT services, including simulation, consultation, and training, visit our website or contact us via info at mr-cft.com.